In this video, we're going to build a broadcast receiver in Android. Let's take a look at this animation and consider several things that we're going to need to do. First of all, we're going to need to build a new class called Broadcast Receiver, and that Broadcast Receiver can receive intents or stimuli from the environment that trigger it to do something. So, for example, we have a broadcast receiver here that is going to play music on Bluetooth, and you notice that it's specifically listening for the orange intent, and it's going to ignore the green intent and the yellow intent that are doing something else. We will need to set up an intent filter and register our broadcast receiver within our activity. Then we will need to make the broadcast receiver class. We're going to have this broadcast receiver change the look and feel of our application when it gets a signal from the outside. Now, ideally, this signal would be Bluetooth connection because many times that means that you're in your vehicle and we want to go to a simplified user interface. Unfortunately, we cannot demonstrate Bluetooth in a broadcast receiver through the emulator, so I'm going to use power instead. But nonetheless, it will give us the same result. And what we'll do is when power is connected, we'll have a user interface that looks one way, just like if Bluetooth were connected. When power is disconnected, we'll have the user interface look a different way, just like when Bluetooth is disconnected and you're less likely to be in your vehicle. Let's start by creating our broadcast receiver class. I could put this in a subdirectory of some type, but I'm just going to go ahead and put this one in root, and we will call it simplify receiver because it's meant to simplify our user interface. Now, simplify receiver should extend from broadcast receiver. Note that when we import it, we get a red line over simplify receiver, and we can alt enter that and say implement members because there is one function that we need to override because it's an abstract function, and that function is on receive. This is what will receive the intent when our broadcast receiver is notified of an intent, so we can take some action in this on receive function. I'm going to give the parameters a little bit more self-describing names. Now, within the onReceive function, we can find out about the intent and what action fired it. We use an intent filter to determine what type of intents will trigger this broadcast receiver. There could be one, there could be many. The action tells us what specific intent type fired this broadcast receiver, so we can take action based on that. Now again, what I'd like to simulate here is receiving a Bluetooth connection, which oftentimes means that we're in a car or something else of that nature, and then simplify the user interface based on that connection. Unfortunately, the Android emulator will not allow me to simulate a Bluetooth connection, but it will allow me to simulate power. So I'm going to use power as a substitute for a Bluetooth connection. Now, power can be connected and power can be disconnected. So this is a good case for what we would traditionally call a switch case statement, but in Kotlin, we call it a win. If you're not familiar with the win construction, we take some type of variable here and then we match it up with something that equals that variable. So if the action is intent action power connected, that means that we've plugged in the device. And whatever we have between this open and close curly will then execute. On the other hand, if the action that triggered this broadcast receiver was power disconnected or unplugging the device, then it's going to run whatever logic we have in this open close curly set. Now, one thing we have to think about is we need to get a message from this broadcast receiver over to our activity so that our activity can change based on what happened in this broadcast receiver. And we can do that by using the place where our state is stored, which in Android with model view view model is the view model. So let's get access to the view model. This broadcast receiver will be instantiated by our activity class, and our activity class has a reference to the view model. So we can simply pass that through the constructor. And now we can access that within our onReceive function. And we can set a value that our Jetpack Compose layout can observe. Now note how I did this. I'm accessing the view model, and I'm accessing a property that I've not yet created on the view model. And that property is simplify. But I'm not assigning a value directly to simplify. Instead, I'm walking down one more layer, and I'm going to the value property on simplify. Now why is that? Well, remember that we want our Jetpack Compose user interface 
to react when this value changes. So instead of being a plain old Boolean that we could simply assign a true or false to, we need to make this a live data type that contains a Boolean. So let's go to the view model and let's add the simplify type and then we'll come back to our broadcast receiver and confirm that everything compiles. So you see we're wrapping a Boolean within a mutable live data type. Now back to our broadcast receiver and you see once we've added that simplify.value everything here compiles. So the next thing we need to do is go to our activity class and number one configure the simplify receiver but number two have the user interface respond when the simplify value changes. The onCreate function of the activity is where our initialization steps often happen because this is the point where the activity object has been created and now we're creating the activity to be shown to the user. So down towards the bottom of this function, not within set content, but right after that, I'm going to configure the broadcast receiver. Remember, there are a few things that we need to do. First of all, we need to pass a reference of the view model to the broadcast receiver. And we can see that at this point, the view model has already been instantiated, instantiated by coin as we see up here. So that's fairly straightforward. Next, we need to add an intent filter which says which of the intents that could trigger a broadcast receiver are we interested in subscribing the simplify receiver to. Finally, with the intent filter set up, let's register the simplify receiver. We simply need to pass in the broadcast receiver instance and the filter that we created to this register receiver function. And that's that. So next step, let's listen to that Boolean in live data and let's decide which part of the user interface we want to change. Now, ideally we could do something like make the app simpler by removing components or maybe make it read only when you're driving so you can't be typing into the app as you're driving, something of that nature. I'm going to demonstrate this in a very simple way instead of redoing the entire user interface. I'm simply going to remove one of our buttons. So first of all, we know that we've set up the simplify variable in our main view model as live data. So we simply need to observe on that as we have observed on other things. I'm going to do it in the specimen facts function, but nonetheless, we've already seen how to do observe as state up in the onCreate function. You see, we have several live data elements that we're observing as state. Let's go back down to specimen facts, which is what kicks off our entire user interface. And we can do an observe a state here. We don't necessarily need to do it in the onCreate. And there you see, we are observing on this simple Boolean now. So when it changes from true to false, this function will get invoked and it can act on that knowledge. One trick though, take a look at the data type. You notice that it's Boolean with a question mark, so it is nullable. So we can use our Elvis operator to give it a default if it is indeed null. So we're saying simple.let. If it is not null, we simply return whatever value it is. But if it is null, we return the value false, indicating that we don't want to simplify. Now, let's go down to our button and we'll pick one, uh, maybe take photo. Let's say that we only want to show take photo if the user is not driving because uh, that's something that requires a bit of coordination. Well, the nice thing about Compose is we're building our UI right here in code. So we can do things like wrap an if test around this button. Now I'm saying if we don't want the simple user interface, go ahead and show the button. So I use the negation operator there, the exclamation point, which is just a little bit tricky because we're saying if we don't want a simple UI, show this button. On the other hand, if we do want a simple UI, we don't want to show the button. Hopefully that makes sense. So if the Boolean is true, we want fewer things on our screen. If it's false, we want more things on our screen. So by using the exclamation, I'm basically accounting for that, and I'm showing this button only if we do not want the simple user interface. To simulate plugged in charging or not plugged in, we simply hit the extended controls on the emulator, which we can get to with the three dot menu here. Then we go to battery, charger connection, none. Now watch closely for the photo button here as I go to AC charger, and you notice the photo button goes away. 
then I go to none, and you see the photo button comes back. So that's the stimulus that's triggering our broadcast receiver on and off. Let me throw in a few breakpoints so we can look at it in high def. I've set a breakpoint in the simplify receiver and also in the specimen facts function, which receives the update when our live data Boolean value called simplify changes. So now when I go to AC charger, our simplify receiver fires and I can step over this. Notice at this point, the action is power connected and it's changing the value of this simplify live data. Again, remember what that is. That's this mutable live data we made just a moment ago. It's changing that to be true instead of false. Let's go ahead and let this play through. Now, notice what happened immediately after that. Right after that value change, a breakpoint hit in specimen facts where we have val simple by view model simplify observe a state. So we know in Jetpack Compose, observe a state can be used to watch live data and react as it changes. So now our simple value should change. Let's see what simple is. And not a big surprise, if you look towards the bottom here, you see simple safe is true. And that's true because our broadcast receiver set it that way. So let me snap a breakpoint down where we have our if test around this button. Now you see if simple safe, but we have the negation operator here. So a true is going to be a false. So simple safe is true, but the negation turns it to a false. And we expect that this if test should be skipped. So I'll do a step over and we see sure enough, it skips that if test and it comes right back down where it can render the next button. Let's see if I can get that all on one screen. So here we go. We started with the if, we skipped it, and now we're going to go on to the next button. And I'll go ahead and choose resume. And if we take a look at our user interface, we'll notice that that button is gone. Now, let's do this exact same activity again, but I'm going to change it from AC charger to none. And you see, once again, the simplify receiver gets invoked. This time we should see power disconnected be the case that is true. And sure enough, it is. And that flips this flag back to false. So I'm going to tell it to continue. And once again, the next breakpoint that we see hit should be the breakpoint in that specimen facts composable function back in our activity where it's observing on this live data. And it's going to decide whether or not to render the button based on that live data. And sure enough, we see it stops there. We step over, step over. And we'll continue on to the if test. And we see that now we have the if test and guess what? The value was false now where it was true before. Let's take that false and let's apply the negation operator, which is going to change a false to a true. And then it's going to go ahead and render this button. And we see sure enough, as I click over, it's composing the button as we speak. And I'll go ahead and play. And we come back and take a look at our user interface. And we see that the button is again there. So in this video, we've seen how to build a broadcast receiver in Android with live data in Jetpack Compose. I hope this video has been helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.